Hello and welcome back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship English broadcast. We do apologize for the technical difficulties. I'm Dallas Easy Fighter. Today. Joining me here on the couch, Kevin Ever Walker and Matt Smite Ross. And we are just about to get underway. Detonator Gold coming up against AHQ Esports Club. We were just talking about um, some of these players on the AHQ side and sort of how they um, stack up and the changes that uh, Detonator Gold and as well some of the other sort of lower ranked teams are starting to make to their rosters now to try and. Um, you know, facilitate and maybe try and get themselves some wins. And to add to that as well, HQ have kind of, for the time being, it's probably not a permanent slot, but Kyrgios has now taken Eddie Boss's place on that support and a role as well. So they are making those kind of type of change-ups as well, which is quite interesting to see. And these are the few teams that are running a seven-man roster, which um, most other teams are running six-man rosters. The other team is Sun Sister, who have also been making lineup changes with their extended roster as well. Yeah, it seems to be most common in the teams in the bottom three, bottom four. Uh, Five Walls, another team that was doing it. Uh, they swapped oh, yeah, Rocket over from support onto basically Winston forever. And, you know, that actually started working out pretty well for them against the teams that were already below them. But now, it, it doesn't seem to be good enough up against the teams that are in the top four. I, was, I mean, we talked a lot about how Hong Kong Attitude, they're a gatekeeper team. Uh, I believe we're actually seeing Fireball play off against Hong Kong Attitude later today, which... Should be a pretty hot matchup, I've got to say. But, uh, yeah, you're right. So, like, a lot of... Uh, yeah, yeah, thanks. It was a good one, right? Good one. I'm on a roll. Um, I'm on a fireball roll. So, the reason, the thing is, with changing, for example, use Detonator Gold as the example here because we're about to get into the game. Dale V changing onto support, so Hate changing onto offense is interesting to me because I didn't recognize that as a particular weakness for their team. Now, I believe their team team's weaknesses come from a variety of different other areas, most... Importantly, in their actual macro play, their team cohesion and that sort of that sort of area. I believe their individual mechanical play is sort of on par, and it's not amazingly mind blowing, but it is good enough for this tournament. So realistically, it's interesting that they did make that change up because again, it wasn't a weakness that I thought was a part of their team. I mean, it's funny you mentioned that because it was something that uh, me and Smite talked about yesterday on the desk about the execution of not just Detonator Gold, but Sun Sister as well. Sun Sister looks like maybe they have a little bit more mechanical skill when it comes to just raw sort of aim and tracking and, you know, when to go in and when to go out. But the execution for Detonator Gold, it might be a little bit easier, you know, if De La V is actually playing from that support role, he can maybe help, I guess, you know, lead the team, make some of the harder calls, why Saharte can really just focus on you know, just fragging essentially, because I feel maybe Sahate might have been maybe a little bit too quiet on his um, support role, and they maybe want someone a little bit more outspoken, and obviously De La V being a DPS player, we all know obviously DPS players, very outspoken uh, type of player. A lot of them also suffer a little bit from tunnel vision as well, uh, and sometimes it's a bit of a boon, right? You want to be focusing as much on killing the other dudes as much as possible, and you want to be focused on that role. You don't want to be making the decisions. You don't want to be thinking like, okay, what has what my team got to do? I've got to be communicating this to my team. Instead, you just want to shoot the guys. So maybe putting a player like shoot that. Shoot the dudes. Shoot yeah, the dudes. Like, shoot the dudes. Point, Let's keep point, that. point your cursor on the dude. <laughs> Let's that's, a, that's a really interesting point because it's the other angle is, the one angle is maybe De La Vie is underperforming, so Hightley performs better on DPS. The other angle is De La Vie chooses to put himself on, on support because Perhaps he's the primary shot caller. We don't know that, or at least I don't know that. If he is the primary shot caller, it is more suitable for him to be on the support rather than the DPS. So that's just a different way to sort of look at that. And however you go about it, there's definitely something that Detonator has noticed within their own team that they wanted to change up. If it is due to the reason that DLV has been underperforming on DPS, I'm not sure I agree with that. But if it's the other reason, then I can definitely see why. And the, just the final sort of um, piece to you know, go over before we get into this matchup there. You know, AHQ, I feel like their changeups weren't due to them sort of underperforming. I think it's because they are running, obviously, that seven-man roster. They want to give everybody a shot, just so if they do get down to the nitty-gritty and do down uh, to the crunch time, essentially, they do have all of their players feeling confident and, I guess, aware of the, you know, the different, I, I guess, heroes and styles of play that they can sort of bring out, you know, to surprise a team, because we've talked about how long this tournament's going to be. And I think, you know, when you get stuck in a best of best of seven sort of series, you know, towards the end of the ser or towards the end of the tournament rather, being able to sort of throw, you know, a spanner in the works and bust out a player on a completely new hero or, you know, completely, um, you know, bring in a new player in itself can be a huge game changer for a team like that. I mean, on the topic of that, though, 13 weeks is a long time to hide strategies like that. I mean, you're, you're going through a quarter of a year uh, and you're playing games every single week. And these aren't just one off one match round of robins right these are best of fives you're seeing at least three maps on different types of maps as well so 
while it could be that uh, teams are swapping things up, uh, using these seven man rosters so that they can try and hide some strategies, hide some uh, unique uh, talents from some of their players, 13 weeks is a very, very long time to do that. And come best of seven series time, uh, I don't think anyone's going to have any secrets anymore. One little tidbit I have as well is I remember from a previous interview with AHQ, one of their post-match ones, um, they noted that Eddie, Boss and Kerry's have very different opposing play styles on Anna. I can't remember which was which, but one was a more defensive player that was more focused on healing. The other was a more offensive player that was more focused on dealing damage. Now, that makes a lot more sense to me in terms of why they're making a, a, a player change up. Um, carries whatever his strength is that I, that I no longer remember, I have to rewatch that interview to find out. That is the current play style that AHQ want to be able to execute. So they believe that he's the one there to play that role. It's also trying to target the strengths of the enemy team. I mean, it can come from something as simple as how your Anna plays, more offensive. That's something that's great at taking a pharmacy out of the sky, right? I mean, Anna can definitely put a lot of pressure in it if you're keeping your head up in the sky, occasionally throwing bio grenade, keep your team alive, but Anna can put a lot of pressure on those two heroes in the sky. I think now, it might also be play uh, hero pools as well. You know, who can then pick up maybe a Torbjorn? Who can pick up um, perhaps even a Symmetra that we haven't seen in a long time? But who can pick up a Mercy? Who can pick up a Zenyatta? So maybe a difference in hero pools could be the case as well. I'm not too familiar with either of the players' full pools. I know they both play Anna. They're possibly both Zenyatta players as well. But now we're starting to see... Um, a lot of the other support picks come out as well. So that's definitely a factor. Yeah, I mean, you usually see the Lucio just locked in still. The, that, that role never really changes, so... However, Crappy is usually the one playing the top. That, well, is, that is quite unique, yeah. Detonated Gold being the home team here. They have picked Lee Zhang Tower, and we are about to get underway. Our first match here of the night, and here we go! Well, we're into control center, a lot of brawl heavy comps like to enter into this map and you can already see triple tank coming up from both of them. Watch Yoshiharu and how he shuts down the enemy DPS players and especially their ultimates. That's going to be the most key target. But in this initial skirmish, Detonator have proven that sometimes they can get ahead, but it's about how they hold that lead. Amakin though, looking for some damage on the sidelines there. Well, Kira is being very much uncontested. Oh, but Amakin opens this one up, finds a headshot and a second shot there onto Dizzy. And now, player down on the side of AHQ. Looks like Detonator might be able to work their way into this one. Amakin almost dropping in there as well. And this is what we've talked about, this uh, hesitant kind of play coming in from Detonator when they have the advantage, not really cashing in. And now they do work their way in and they walk right into Kalman's particle beam as he picks up Samurai D there. And AHQ picked the first cap up off that. That was, that was a 6v5. Uh, Dizzy was taken out straight away by Amakin. That's the moment that Detonator should run in. They're running the McCree rather than the Soldier. You've got a lot of brawl potential right at close range. Literally just run six guys into their team, throw a flashbang over the Reinhardt she will take that out of the question and suddenly you're on the point but they lose it and now AHQ are in the lead with ultimates watch for the graviton surge but also watch how Yoshiharu tries to stop oh great positioning there and you can see Kalman just contemplating if he should be throwing out that graviton there as they stack up towards the doorway now AHQ have full control of this choke point now and all of those ultimates to work with Detonator do have a little bit to play with themselves Dodoloff going to be dropping around the back side there so now Detonator just going to have to wait for him to respawn they are obviously very close to their uh, spawn point so the uh, fight should be coming underway any second now but AHQ full set of ultimates in the bank and Detonator trying to push their way through. There goes the Graviton, believing it's eaten there. So great stuff now coming out from Detonator, managing to bait out one of those ultimates from the side of AHQ. But will they commit to this next fight? Cowman tried so hard to make it not get eaten. He put it on the wall and it still got eaten. Yoshihara, you are a god. And there's that lazy Titan self-destruct we all know and love, picking up that double kill there as well. So AHQ is still not having any issues with this. Dropping a few ultimates here, they managed to use three and still clean up the side of Detonator. The Deadeye came in there as well, so Hate's Graviton Surge, but to no avail, they find nothing. Yeah, unfortunately, the, the start of that was great. They threw out a lot of ultimates from AHQ, but instead Detonator used their own, weren't able to execute oh, on the fight. Oh, Shatter onto the whole team here, and Eric just going to town on Detonator as well, just cleaning up the rest of these players. This is a full-on spawn camp now coming out from AHQ. What can they possibly do? They still have a few ultimates to work with, but AHQ have constantly been at least even with them, if not in the lead the entire time. Now they're starting to run a little bit low in the tank there, but still, they're picking up kills before every fight. Well, there comes the sound barrier. Nanobu's going to be used, but Samurai D is taken down instantly there. Amakin's going to be the next one to fall. Tactical Visor coming in from Dizzy. Detonator have no chance, can't even touch the point there. And AHQ take their first map very convincingly. Wow, I mean... 
at the start of that, Amakin takes out Dizzy. I'm thinking, all right, this is Detonator. This Showing is where they up. get an early lead. This is where they can prove themselves that they can hold the point. But 100 to zero, they didn't even go in on the point. 6v5, this is the hesitation I've seen out of not just Detonator, but also Sun Sister. So I'm just a little bit confused there because they, they've got such a great combat just running at the enemy team. There's not too much to it, right? You've got Flashbang, just throw it over the Reinhardt shield. What's he gonna do? Now, 5v6, AHQ was still holding position and in fact, punishing Detonator's hesitation, getting a lot of cap on the point, and then the second one of them stands out of position, they get a pick, even up the numbers, and then eventually win the fight. Well, Amakin switching over to the uh, Genji now, seeing if that's going to work out for them. And Saihate, so keep an eye on him on his trace to see how that stacks up coming up against Dizzy's. And Dizzy makes him pay instantly into this one, finding that kill on Saihate very early indeed. 10 seconds till the control point unlocks here, trades coming out, but Amakin only finding one kill. Will that be enough for the side of Detonator? It looks like it won't be. And the brawl coming out from AHQ is extremely ruthless now, just punishing Detonator out there on, this, on the side balcony, and they're easily going to get this first cap uncontested. And that was so many kills for AHQ, completely one-sided, so they're well in the lead for the ultimate charge as well. Both Genjis will get their ults at similar-ish times, but it will be Cowman getting there first. Nano Boost is still a while away, so the question is, do they try and use it to get a very early team fight win, or do they wait, try and win this fight with purely frags and not using any ultimates? HQ have proven that they can do that. Oh, Amakin finds Amakin... carriers right there in the back line. That's what Detonator need. They need to get aggressive onto this one, but Kalman going to work as well. Amakin finding a second kill now, so this is very good. Dizzy going to be forced back here as well. They need to put this pressure right now onto Dizzy. If they can find that kill, that is exactly what they need. They do indeed find it. Here we go, Detonator turning up winning themselves a fight, but let's see if they can get the cap before AHQ get back into this one. Long time taken to actually move in and get the cap, and in fact Yoshihara is looking to go in and contest it a little longer, doesn't get there in time, but Detonator, can they entrench themselves on the point? Because remember, they only used no ults during that fight, right? So now they've just got to start saving things up, they've got a Nanoblade combo, but hey look at that, so do AHQ. It's going to be a match between the Genjis here. Who's going to shut down who? Who's going to kill everyone else on the enemy team? Oh, AHQ going for that sneaky cap. There, there comes the Nanoblade from Amakin. Finds absolutely nothing, just slicing thin air here. Does manage to catch Dizzy right at the end, so that's a big kill there for the side of Detonator. But AHQ stacking up a lot of ultimates here. They could choose to fall back off this one, but they're going to have Eric go in there using the Primal Rage to contest the point. Point still in control uh, for the side of Detonator though, so they are playing at a quite an advantage here as Yoshi manages to take down Kalman as well. So Dizzy going to be the only real DPS making his way back into this fight here. Lazy, Titan and Eric just trying to stagger on the point here, but can they hold it down long enough before um, they die? It seems like they won't be able to. Crappy going to be making his way back there as well. He should fall down as well as Detonator are just cleaning this one up, looking very good now on 50%. What can AHQ do to answer this one? So the fight looked great for AHQ at the start of it, where the Nanoblade was used by Detonator and it didn't get a whole lot, but it actually faded out the sound barrier from Crappy, so AHQ didn't have the humongous shield that Detonator did later on. Now, however, AHQ still didn't use a Nanoblade of their own, but this has given up 70% of the point to Detonator. They can be okay with losing it here because they can still come back, win one fight, and hold the point for the rest of the game. So again, this fight is probably gonna last until at least 90%, so if Detonator even lose it here, they still only need to one, win one more fight. Nanoblade there for the side of AHQ, self-destruct gonna be thrown out there. Doesn't find anything with that one, like, just all. like Kalman's Dragon, Dragon Blade here, even trades going across the board and Detonator slightly coming out on top as we go into this one. Kalman doesn't have much support here on the point and he falls as well. AHQ are just falling to pieces right now. Detonator almost at 100% and coming out after this fight. Can anyone get there and keep this overtime alive? Eric gets taken down, overtime ticking down and Detonator even it out. Detonator, that's... That's, that's more a, like it. That's, more, that's like, more like it. That's what I'm talking about. The aggressiveness, uh, capitalizing on advantages that you get during or even before a fight. But the big one, the big swing fight there was where Amakin managed to bait out the sound barrier. So yes, he didn't get a lot with the Nanoblade combo and usually you'd look at that and say, that's not a good trade. That's two ultimates for one. But it did end up actually winning his team the fight because they had a sound barrier later on when it just ended up to be brawling. And also Cowman dying before he could even use his own Dragon Blade during that fight just made it so that AHQ couldn't win there. Now the big difference is when he did eventually use his blade, he got the same result as Amakin, except he didn't bait out a sound barrier. Well. Detonator lighting the fuse here. Let's see if they can keep up the same kind of intensity coming into map number three and take an early lead into the series. 
would be probably the best show we've seen out of Detonator. And I mean, I'm so surprised them doing this against AHQ. It's very impressive Ooh. stuff right now. But AHQ, one of these teams that know exactly how to answer the, answer the question and bite back extremely hard. Let's see how this one goes. Detonator in a nice position here, but they do stack up. They eat the Biotic Grenade. Will AHQ make them pay for that uh, small little bit of uh, stacked up mistakes I think. Detonator do not like flankers with this composition. I mean, look, they can just shut down with flashbang with hook, and now they can go into this tight space where it's so hard for Cowman and Dizzy to get value. And that nice little bit of retreat coming out from uh, the side of Detonator earned them the first kill into the map, taking down Kalman as well. I feel like if they put this pressure onto Dizzy and Kalman, there's Sneaky Dizzy trying to get in behind Amakin there. Nice shot landed onto Crappy there. De La V going to be the one to finish him off with a nice little boot. And now all the pressure coming into Amakin. The nano boost coming onto him just to keep him through this one. Does have the Deadeye up to work with as well. He's just going to commit it straight away. And goes to unleash it and un unleash it he does. Detonator cleaning this first fight up. Tizzy falls down there as well. And Detonator in control with the first cap. That's some big commitments from Detonator though. They used the Deadeye and the Nano Boost. Yes, it cleanly won them the fight, but I feel like they still could have moved into it and finished it up, cleaned it up without using those ultimates. Now AHQ can move into this fight. They only use Primal Rage during that. They've got a lot of big ones coming up, particularly that Nano Blade combo. Can, can it be shut down by Amakin? Well, it comes in there. Nice sound barrier there, but it doesn't keep Doddle off alive through that one. And Dizzy also wiping up a couple more players here as well. So Kalman opens this one up indeed with that uh, Nano Blade and now Dizzy has the Pulse Bomb to work with as well. It's just not looking good for Detonator. I don't think they'll be able to hold the point on after this one. And just as you mentioned, a little bit of an overcommitment there coming up from Detonator in that early fight, and they pay the price there. AHQ definitely punishing that there as well, but Detonator, hey, I mean, they're still buying more time on the point, getting each additional percentage, it's still gonna add up in the end. Now, AHQ can entrench themselves here by getting a Pulse Bomb kill at the start of this, that'll build up their ults, and that should be enough to allow them to stabilize. But then again, maybe they already have. Detonator used a lot of ults during that last fight. Uh, I mean, Amakin, he's coming up close to the Deadeye, but not a huge ultimate, but that's oh, what I'm talking about. Oh, there it is. And that'll be the Pulse Bomb to start things off there. They also used the um, Pole Hog there on that defense um, on the side of Detonator, so interesting to see there wasn't uh, much mileage coming Dizzy. out of that one. Now, Dizzy falls down here, actually, so that's exactly what they were looking for. Amakin being that uh, counter that they so desperately need right now. Self-destruct, finding absolutely nothing there uh, for the side of AHQ. Does manage to buy them a little bit of time. Deadeye not being so useful. This one, Nano Boost coming in now onto the likes of Eric N and AHQ should, should still be able to hold onto this one just for a little bit longer. A lot of pressure being put onto Saihate, and Ooh. great play there from Kalman, just baiting him out, not letting him get any uh, sort of damage onto him, and he falls down as well. Samurai D left alone on the point, and AHQ stabilizing very well off the back of that. AHQ stabilizing off a fight that they really should have lost there. They lost a lot of numbers at the start of it. Dizzy dying straight away, not a fantastic thing. But again, it was just Eriken jumping around the point. Nano boosted with Primal Rage. Not the most fantastic use of DPS, but it keeps him alive so very well. He can just stay on the point forever. It allowed Dizzy to come back because Trace is a hero that can get back into the fight very, very quickly. Now, we're coming up to 70%. Detonator of what, one and a half fights left in them. They've got a Nano Boost, who are they going to use it on? Very likely just going to be Winston. Oh, flashbang oh. lands. Amakin going in and doing work here. Finding that kill onto Kalman. Can he pick up Crappy up there as well as he skates along the wall, managing to escape with just a minuscule amount of HP. He's still keeping himself alive over on the back side of the map there. And look indeed, just back onto the bridge. Detonator finally getting themselves onto the point and getting them some cap times. Is there anyone from AHQ to contest? No, there isn't. Detonator back in control. Now, a few ultimates to work with on their side oh, as well. Oh, Dragon Blade! Big commitment now coming in from AHQ. It's going to be the Dragon Blade. Do we find anything with it though? It looks like that's a negative with that great sleep dart finding him. And it's just going to be De La V just cleaning him up there as well. Now Detonator looking in full control and look at the ultimates they have to work with. What is going on? Committing a nano boost, a self-destruct. That's not really what Detonator like really need to hold on to the point for the rest of the game, right? They've, they're sitting at 70%, right? This is two at best fights left for AHQ. If they lose this fight, they have to rush in to get a second one. And they used everything in that last fight trying to just win it there and then. Well, 77%, they need to make something happen soon, and they go straight in there. Now Saihate managing to find something with his whole hog this time. Double kill there for Amakin with the Deadeye. Nice positioning here over on the uh, side of the map. And they easily manage to push AHQ back here, but oh! the hook coming in from Saihate. Just the final nail in the coffin there. Does it 92%. Contest? And they need to get in and contest this. Is he in a good position to do it? But, but now he's he? been spotted. Can they even touch the point? He should be able to jump over here and contest. He does have Eric as well on the Winston. So they will be able to force this one into overtime. This is all or nothing right now for AHQ. Looking 
are very, very frantic on the point to try and keep them that their hopes alive here. Eric looking for a uh, knockoff kill here. But will he manage to find it? Not at all. Self destruct now coming in for the side of AHQ. Does it find anything? Not at all. And it should be a messy fight indeed, but Dinata slowly edging out on top, I feel. Yeah, and in fact, it's AHQ has the onus on them to get to the point. They don't even make it there in time, and wow. Detonator heating things up, AHQ. I mean, they beat the Flash Wolves, but Detonator are really bringing it to, this, to them this game. I mean, this is the Detonator that I wanted to see last night, and they're really pulling out everything. This is great. This is fantastic. And Amakin, specifically, is really showing up. I am absolutely blown away here. I was going to go full Savage before the series and be like, you know, if Detonator Gold managed to pick themselves up a map, I'll be happy with that. But I mean, now they've picked themselves up too, and now they're on match point here. And I'm just absolutely, I'm, I'm so, I'm so fired up for the for the Detonator boys right now. Okay, this is going to be the first time we're going to see vastly different team compositions. We're going into the night market. That's going to be Dizzy on Soldier 76. This is a much heavier brawl composition. The big difference here is that someone has to go up and get him. He will constantly stand up on the high ground or at least be behind his Reinhardt shield. Can the flankers get back in time? They don't have a McCree to stop him. There's no Roadhog. So uh, Amakin and Saihate can definitely get into the back line quite safely. I mean, what can these big brawling tanks actually do against the mobile DPS that Detonator are bringing? Well, Samurai D jumps straight in there and not to his death though, surprisingly, just yet. Saihate was getting a nice position there on the side, but now Samurai D being caught out of position a little bit. Can he escape? No, he can't. Dizzy will find him there. And now if he can get this kill onto Saihate as well, there's going to be no pressure left for Dizzy. Um, and it's just going to be all AHQ coming up with this first fight. And Amakin Dragon finding Blade. himself a mech, and that's going to give him the Dragon Blade there. Sound Barrier, though, coming out from the side of AHQ. They should be able to counterplay this, but the Pulse Bomb coming in from Saihate as well. Nano Boost on Saihate. Hero Play coming in from the Tracer right now. Trying to keep this one here for Detonator and Gold, and indeed they are edging this fight out. They're capping the points. He's Sleep asleep. on Dizzy with the Tactical Visor. Detonator are turning this one up, and they get the first cap again. I think I see why Delav is now on the Anna. Just, sorry, no, actually, that's going to be Dodolov. Dodolov hitting all the sleep darts, and especially the important ones. Now, AHQ still had quite a lot of numbers around, so they can come in and contest. But Detonator are just getting easy percentage points here, where very likely they should not have with all the ultimates that AHQ committed. Well, AHQ have found the answer here, being able to push Detonator back, finding that kill there on um, to Amakin as well. So, how they just trying to contest? just earning themselves just a little bit more cap time. It's going to be Samurai D as well, trying to do the exact same thing. Oh, oh. almost finding the environmental kill there as well, but AHQ should be able to recap this one, and indeed they do. So Hate just going to suicide himself off the edge here. Reset now for Detonator Gold. Well, Primal Rage committed to buy just not even 10% more on the point, so Detonator, they're going to have a little less to work with. AHQ, despite using a few ults earlier on, it was actually really mostly the tactical visor that was put to sleep. Now look at Dizzy, he's basically at his ult once more, and this is a similar situation. We saw it on Control Center. Almost all ultimates are up for AHQ. This is going to be very hard for Detonator to break through. It's great they got that first 30%, but they need to beat AHQ and then stabilize. Oh, boom goes the self-destruct from Lazy Titan, picking up a double AHQ, getting Detonator in that choke point there, and no issues at all. And now look at this pressure coming out from Lazy Titan, trying to finish Amakin off. Will not be able to find it there, but AHQ taking the fight straight to Detonator's house and coming out on top. Detonator can be happy with how that went. That's two ultimates coming out from AHQ, and also a lot of the kill came from the self-destruct, so no one else was charging their ults. I mean, to be fair, AHQ already had all their ults, so it didn't really matter, but Detonator, they still bought out ultimates. Now they're gonna have Nanoblade combo, they need to use Pulse that Bomb to finds win. nothing there, that's gonna be disappointing for them. Nanoblade, will he hit the Dragon Blade here? He does have the Nano Boost. Amakin not finding much with this one at all. The Sound Barrier was being used there as well, Whoa. and he goes straight into a Helix Rocket. Great play there from Dizzy. Self-destruct from Yoshiharu, finding themselves a Consolation Kill, but Detonator are gonna have to fall back here again. AHQ being very patient and methodical there on that first uh, fight loss and now looking very strong indeed just past 73 percent now that was detonator's fight they threw everything at it and still didn't manage to win now they're going for a less ultimate focused team comp they've thrown roadhog into the mix they want to just get picks here because they know it's basically their only hope they did buy a lot of ultimates out of ahq they don't have a lot to work with either and now they're going another way they're capping the point they're forcing ahq's 
hand to come in. He's capping it. He's just straight up capping oh, it. Oh, is it almost a full ninja swindle here coming in from Saihate in the back lines? Can he find this kill? The biotic field goes down. It's now over. And Saihate, this fight could be all him if he manages to pick up Dizzy. But Dizzy going to be coming out on top of that one. Overtime ticking down here. No ultimate. Just a primal rage to work with on the side of Detonator. What can this angry Winston do? Can he keep Detonator's hopes alive here? They're just a millimeter away from getting this cap here as well. But AHQ seconds away from winning here as they're just trying to clean up the last of these tanks. Urshad are going to be committed there. Easy kills now coming in for the side of AHQ. No worries there. Overtime ticking down gets kept alive ever so slightly there by De La V. Going to be Saihate and Dodolov making their way back to the point. Overtime going down again. Saihate still on the point. Still keeping this one alive but with 6 HP no hope and that's going to be AHQ evening out the series here. And that looked a lot more like the standard AHQ versus Detonator match that we were expecting. AHQ able to win fights with minimal ult usage. One tactical visor that was shut down and they managed to turn around and actually win the fight. Cap the point and then again stabilize because they ended up having that ultimate back up very very quickly one fight later and then having six ultimates this is more of what we're expecting out of ahq detonator though when their own fights came around when they were committing in when they were saying this is the fight that we need to win with our ultimates unfortunately it just didn't go down nano boost onto amakin he doesn't even pull out the sword eventually when it comes out he dashes into a helix rocket and then just completely wastes it. If he had done that with nano boost on, he'd at least have the damage reduction. Mm, I mean, it's that real, that question of sort of that execution coming up from the side of Detonator there. You know, should they have gone in through into the sound barrier? Should they not have? Obviously, they made the mistake there. Detonator obviously opt for the same route that they have uh, done previously here. HQ they've learned. They have indeed, and they get a little bit more aggressive onto them, forcing them back here into the choke of the room. There is a little health pack, a couple of health packs for them to work with, but look, will it be enough healing? Look at the vastly different team comp AHQ are running. They're calling Detonator's bluff here. They're not running flankers into the McCree and the Roadhog this time. And they are the team that have just run oh. straight onto the point and put Saihate to a sleep. Oh, almost knocking him off the edge here as well. Saihate, oh, he's so close to dropping right now. I can't believe it that he manages to escape with his life, but not for long. Indeed, he stays alive, gets back to the rest of his team. Saihate getting around the side there, trying for a flank of his own. Didn't manage to pick that kill up, but AHQ now in control of the first cap and all because Saihate couldn't find that pick. Yeah, hey, look at that, Saihate. It's great that you managed to stay alive, but you weren't on the point at all. You weren't getting hooks. You weren't getting the picks, and that's exactly what he needs to be doing for his team comp right now. Detonator once more on the back foot, but they're the team with an ultimate right now. It's only a nano boost. Who are you going to put it on? Last time they put it on to Amakin, who literally just left clicked and eventually got his ult with it. Well, no pressure being put onto Dizzy as well. And look at this man with those Helix rockets. Doesn't really miss at all. And just they line up for him, Detonator. Dizzy still just getting to go to work up here in the back lines nano boost coming in on uh on the side of uh ahq there so gonna be seeing what they can find with this one dead eye for the counter looks to find something finds absolutely nothing with that dead eye and this is the issue when you run that mccree you know compared to obviously dizzy on the soldier gets a lot more stable dps and a lot more of a stable consistent ultimate there detonator being forced off and what can they do to answer this ahq already on 55 percent and ultimates to blow it's once more again detonator just committing ults to fights that they are losing right now they're coming up to another chance for them to do so another strength that their composition does have is that roadhog can just get those one shot kills with that hook but this is a different team composition to last time we were on gardens they don't have traces of genjis who are you gonna hook zarya reinhardt even anyone that you hooked has a chance of being oh, shielded. Oh, Surge now coming in from Kalman. Going to be able to clean this fight up easily for Detonator. De La v dropping the sound barrier just ever so slightly late there. Going to be Lazy Titan being able to pick up the next one here. Now Amakin in a spot of bother has Dizzy flanking him there. And Detonator just have to reset this one after this big team wipe coming in from the side of AHQ. They have to reset it as soon as possible. We're sitting at 90% right now. Detonator, they've got some tools to win. But there's a sound barrier for AHQ. Oh no, there's that's a disaster! Visor, and there's a kill! <laughs> And without De La V as well, now they're one man down, 98%, they need someone to get on the point, it's going to be Yoshiharu flying in there trying to keep this one alive, Samurai D taken out of the fight here as well, AHQ trying to keep this one alive, there comes the Nano Visor, just cleaning up the last of these Detonator players here, and AHQ sweating a little bit in these first couple of maps, but do manage to edge out Li Zhang Tower 3-2. to two. Whoa, What a series, oh, <laughs> Detonator really bringing the fire there, that was, that was what I wanted to see out of them ever since I saw them on day one against Blank. Now, AHQ still got three out of five of those maps as the expected result, as the team that is just vastly ahead of Detonator in the standings, and it seems like mechanical skill right now because a lot of the fights were simply one out without using ultimates, without necessarily using huge macro play to actually win there. It was literally just shutting the team down by killing them. I mean, it sounds so simple, but that's what happened. I mean... 
Crappy had a sweat tail there, you know, after a couple of after after a couple after a couple of map losses there. I thought uh, AHQ were getting a little bit uh, hot and bothersome, you know, didn't they? I don't know where that came from. Those two wins. What do you reckon, Avril? I think for Detonator, the problem is still two to one on match point, failure to secure up the the eventual win. Uh, good play, good sort of comeback by HQ, identifying particularly on Gardens where the weaknesses were. You guys noted they didn't run the dive again into the shield-based composition of Detonator. They played a shield-based composition themselves. Now, the big up for HQ is positionally, when they play a shield composition against a shield composition on Detonator, they have the positional advantage because they already take the point, hey, we got the cap, come and get us. Detonator playing from behind, ever like, from that point on, we just didn't know they're always going to be playing behind on Gardens. Um, they did rely a lot on Amakin's McCree on Gardens and the surprise factor of that composition that HQ didn't sufficiently adapt to in that particular map. Now, that while they gave Detonator Gold a nice win, I feel like Detonator Gold, particularly on some of the other maps, they, they kind of fell short to, I want to say control of, of control in the sense that they got spawn camped twice, let's be really honest. Control sent us straight away. Got spawn camped, didn't break through. McCree, not a good pick there. Not what you want to be able to actually break through a strong shield barrier. Um, they play the sort of mix dive, mix backline where you're half committing with the Winston, but then you're also playing McCree. So your McCree's not really protected by tanks, but your tanks don't even actually have the dive back up from something like Genji. So you're playing a half-half composition and neither side really I believe fulfills the execution of what the goal is. So that kind of falls short for me from what Detonator were trying to do. And it's kind of why I don't think what they were wanting to do in Control really control Center in particular really worked out. And again, winning on Gardens was mostly due to being, to catching HQ off guard. But HQ, look, again, able to adapt when we got to the end. Which was great, right? I mean, it's gr great to see a team actually start doing that. A lot of times we'll see uh, during the Gardens match itself, uh, the first time the Amica, the, the, that team composition comes out, <laughs> A lot of other teams would just start swapping things up. They would have swapped into the composition that AHQ ran the second time. AHQ still stuck with what they were running the first time. And it did almost come out and get a win there. They did almost manage to come back on Gardens the first time. But a lot of other teams would have swapped and then they would have just been playing catch up from that point onwards. They would have been so far behind in Ultimates. It would have been a big question of whether they would be able to just outfrag them in fights where they weren't able to use Ultimates because they were so far behind. Uh, also, I just want to talk about as well just how they play, like how they, how they posture around the points and around the next fights. AHQ is much more aggressive at planting their feet into position on the point itself, actually getting there. I mean, the biggest example of this was on the very first map on Control Center, right? We had, we had Detonator, they literally got a pick. They killed the main DPS Dizzy on AHQ and still didn't go in. They still didn't go in with their numbers advantage. I feel like they're just not playing nearly as aggressive as they should be, whereas AHQ are. I mean, I feel this is also down to some of the hero pool selections on the side of Detonator there. Saihata, you know, he's been running the Tracer. He also runs the Soldier that we saw yesterday as well. And I feel what they really need to do is they need to get Amakin on the Soldier. I think because, you know, it's as you mentioned, you know, the McCree works really well. You know, it's a big surprise pick, but when you don't have the tanks to keep him alive, McCree is so far behind Soldier, I feel, especially in the current state of the meta. You know, Soldier's so much better at being able to keep himself alive, you know, fall back if he gets pressured by himself a little bit. I think if they have Amakin on the Soldier and playing Soldier, I guess, to a high level, that's where they really be able to push themselves forward a little bit. But again, it comes back down to their execution. You know, they're just not aggressive enough when they need to be on the side of Detonator there. I, th I think the main story of that series was on Gardens where Detonator came out with a well-deserved win, but they came out with a full hard counter to dive. McCree, Flashbang versus Tracer and Genji. You got Roadhog, hook straight onto all the DPS as well. You even have counters to Farah if HQ wanted to go that route. So yeah, they, they play something that hard countered dive. HQ played the dive. They didn't give it up. They decided they wanted to keep continuing. They got heavily punished and Detonator well-deservedly got that win. But this is the thing with Detonator is I don't, I kind of feel like they are finding these little kind of areas where they just sneak one in there, but it doesn't feel consistent. It feels like they're almost relying on gimmicks to win. It's not really a gimmick. They found a hard counter, but really, are you going to fall AHQ twice? Obviously, they didn't, and they can't rely on these sort of things to be able to say, hey, we got the winning composition. For Detonator, it doesn't look like they're adapting, certainly not as quickly as HQ are adapting. Well, the difference is as well, AHQ just did the exact same thing that 
Detonator did. They came out with a hard counter to their composition. What are you going to do when you hook someone? They're just going to get shielded by Zarya, survive. You, can, you can't even hook them because there's too many it's, shields. There's start also with. the Reinhardt barrier. What have you got to break that? McCree does so much less damage to barriers than Soldier, who does 500 damage to shields per clip. That's a huge amount of damage compared to what McCree can do. Sure, he does great damage when he's hitting your head, but funnily enough, barriers don't have heads. So, and like I said, it's, it's a big, and like big I said, counter. positionally, didn't they always wanted to go to the white room? They wanted to take that very narrow. This is this is hard countering dive because you're taking the narrow spaces. Dive can't go in there. They're stuck in these very short, these very big chokes, small chokes rather, I should say. And Dive doesn't want to do that. Dive wants to be able to fight you in an open area. You deny them that by going to the white room. You deny Dive by picking McCree and you by picking Hog, except by continuing to go that way. HQ just said, cool, we can play shield composition too, but we're going to sit on the point, we're going to cap it, and you've got to come to us. And so, I mean, um, just before we move into the uh, next map sort of discussion there, how do you? How would they have counteracted that? Would they have split, split like three and three, you know, three across Detonator the bridge? Detonator counter it. Yeah, how would Detonator they? would have had to change up. I think Detonator should have changed the dive. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're playing a little bit of compositional catch up, but after the first fight, you'll lose maybe 15 to 20 percent. You got 80 percent to then catch up with, but I believe you would have a better composition to then fight against this heavy shield based thing that HQ were then playing. And you know, Detonator can do that. They can run tracers. They can run Genjis. They can run Winston. They've shown that before. If they did that. I believe they would have had a better chance, or at least if they're going to play shield versus shield, take the shield fight in the open area and not in the small choke because you're never actually breaking through onto the cap itself and you need to be able to do that because HQ had control of the cap and they were getting progress and Detonator weren't. Yeah, that's basically the, the, the point that I was going to add on to that as well is that there are, there's more than one way to get to that point. You can go across the bridge as well. I mean, sure. Pretty there's, frisky though, you there's, know. You, uh, yeah, there's, 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 there's a threat of getting yeah, knocked off. You walk across but, with the shield, you're fine. You, you're not yeah. really at risk. When you slow yeah, there's no, they the had no Pharaoh as well, obviously, exactly. you know, they don't have to worry about the And they concuss. wouldn't want to run a Pharaoh because Amakin was running a McCree, so that would just exactly. be a death and, sentence. And so also, uh, you know, the, the biggest threat of getting knocked off that bridge as well, which is one of the big reasons that a lot of teams don't like going through it, is Lucio knocking you back off. What's a Lucio going to do? He's got to get behind the shield, and oh, then well, suddenly Amakin's there. Whoa there, you're dead. Crappy is, a, crappy is a Whoa, little bit of a... Crappy's a bit of a wizard when it comes to the Lucio boopies, I I've, feel. <laughs> I've, I've seen some interesting yeah. paths to getting to that, to that point and knocking people off the bridge, but I still think Amakin would have been there with the flashbang just to shoot Crappy in the head and well, say, look, none of that. Well, AHQ, it's now their pick, and they have indeed picked King's Row, so it's going to be interesting to see how Detonator fare on this one. Very strong performance on Li Zhang Tower. I feel that this is going to be... Uh, a little bit tighter than uh, yesterday's King's Row that we saw. You're well, asking me? <laughs> well, <laughs> well, okay. well, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking at, the, at the just in the general, general direction. vicinity. I'll, yeah, sure. I'll say just yes. Oh, wow. We're getting straight into this one. No time wasted at all. They're fighting each other. Oh, just, you know, a little bit of target practice up on the high ground there. So going to be interesting to see if Detonator now have learned, I guess, from their mistakes. Will they put enough pressure on the high ground or are they just going to go for that sombra cheese comp oh. to start us off? Why are they running Amakin on the McCree again? I do well, not agree. <laughs> well, they're running into the same comp that they ran into on Gardens. And remember, running through these choke points, AH2 are great at standing their ground. I'd be surprised if they even moved off the point at this moment in time, right? Now, Detonator, they're running a very similar shield composition, brawling, moving in with a big death ball that does sort of favor uh, Amakin with the McCree if he can get in and flashbang the Reinhardt, take that shield down, and then also follow it up with killing the Reinhardt. Amakin needs some help though. But he doesn't need it right now as he's got a good position here, doesn't need too much uh, healing when there's no one giving him pressure. As I say that though, AHQ answer back, opening this up onto Samurai D there, Mech goes down as well for Yoshi, so nothing Detonator can do into this early fight and it's all coming down to the positioning there. You saw Detonator make their way through the choke point and then they've got absolutely nothing after that. They get completely stuck at the gate and AHQ take the fight straight to them. You've got to look at the differences, right? You're running Reinhardt compositions, right? Usually that's won by either whoever loses their shield first or whichever Reinhardt gets caught out by a flashbang or hook or sleep or anything like that. Detonator are running the McCree. It's on them to go and flashbang the Reinhardt shield. AHQ will win the damage battle because they've got oh, Dizzy. Bold charge coming through there dizzy finding that kill onto amakin so the big dps being lost there for the side of detonated gold samurai d though up in the front lines finding a kill uh, onto his counterpart reinhardt now so let's see if the rest of uh, ahq can bail them out of this one there's going to be that nano boost all over kalman on the zarya sound barrier coming in as well counter graviton surge big charge through it samurai d dizzy managing to go to town up on the high ground remaining moderately uncontested but samurai d going for that hero reinhardt play is not going to be enough 
and AHQ managed to hold this one down only just but Detonator getting 28.5%. Oh, I mean, it, it's an okay push by Detonator, but again, Yoshiharu, he went up to deal with Dizzy for a little while, but then, then he left. Also, also, how, how do you get up there as Reinhardt? That's no areas. What's he going to do? Protect Precision German way. engineering, mate. Just, <laughs> he's doing it right now. He's just doing some kind of pixel walking up there. I don't know how the players in, in these tournaments find the positions that they do. They always, they always manage to impress me. It's, it's amazing. But now, Detonator, they went into that fight with a lot of their own. Good odds. positioning. They don't have gas for this. Good positioning from Detonator. If they can, they manage to find the right half. But Dizzy still uncontested up in the high ground. First of all, takes out their support, so this is going to be extremely hard for Detonator. The rest of them now dropping like dominoes here. Nothing they can do at all. Going to be forced to fall back yet again. Somebody needs to deal with Dizzy. Someone needs to get up there, and I know who that someone is. I'm going to call him out right now. It's Yoshiharu. All he has to do is fly up and get in his face. Yes, Dizzy can contest it while the biotic field is up, but while he's doing that, he is still shooting either a D.Va or a Defense Matrix or just running for his life and not killing the rest of Detonator. Now, AHQ, they've won a lot nope. of fights without using their ultimates, so they're good to go. There he goes. Gets that pressure put onto him straight from Yoshiharu. Will it be enough, though, uh, for the rest of Detonator to push into this, this one? But now he's been forced back here got Karez's support Eric N gonna find that first kill onto Dodloff not much Ana play coming up from the side of Detonator when she's dead every time that Graviton Surge picking up three in that one as well so AHQ should be able to clean this one up Detonator looking very split up in this fight and absolutely again nothing they can do here not fighting as a cohesive unit and AHQ making them pay the price so they made one correct decision which was to get uh, Yoshiharu up there contesting Dizzy. Dizzy was busy for a little while and, and to a point so was Karis as well. He had to help his bunny up. They do have the bunny system up there. I feel like Detonator need to commit a little bit more but Anakin, wow, he's going hard. Well, 30 seconds left on the clock here and it's coming down to this one. It's business time here, and business is booming here for Detonator. They are managing to get themselves in here, but with Samurai D having no support, 30 HP, the nano boost on him as well. Dizzy still uncontested, and I mean, this is, this is his shop. He's just going to work right now up here on the balcony. Again, nothing that any, any everything Detonator throw at him, they just can't find any success in taking him out. Tactical They're shutting this down now. Coming out, and now this is just going to be it. Will there even be an overtime? Graviton Surge. Absolutely nothing here, not even on the point, and that's going to be AHQ holding that very convincingly. Well, very similar comps, the big difference being the Soldier and the, and the McCree. And I tried to talk about this in the middle of the match, but got a little bit frisky, so we had to talk about some other things. But the big key difference there is that Reinhardt battles are just down to who loses their shield first. And now there's two ways to do that. You literally damage it, and Dizzy is always going to win the DPS competition against the McCree. Soldier just does more damage. And not to mention Dizzy was quite uncontested for a lot of that. Now, there is a way that Amakin can win this on the McCree though, right? He just flashbang, flashbang the Reinhardt, right? Shut the shield down, suddenly kill him. I mean, you don't have a lot of time. If you're running a Roadhog, you can usually hook him, but uh, you still have enough damage there, especially with McCree headshots. You can actually kill Reinhardt rather quickly. And also if Yoshiharu is up dealing with uh, Dizzy at the same time, you should be winning that battle on the ground as well. So, Detonator just were not doing that. I did not see Amakin moving in and flashbanging the Reinhardt shield often enough, and AHQ punished them for it. Dizzy went uncontested for so long, and even when he was, he still had Keras there to back him up. And now, we talked yesterday about how maybe uh, having an Anna up there is a bit of a two-for-one when you're diving up there just to shut them down. You get, the, you get the support as well, you get the main healer, but they were only sending Yoshiharu. They weren't running a dive composition. They didn't have a Genji or a Winston to go up there and deal with it too. So they only had one Yoshiharu. He's only up there trying four or five seconds. With only one methods. Yoshiharu. Only sometimes, one sometimes you need, sometimes you, you need gotta to remember to bring extra Yoshiharu. Yeah, you gotta make sure, yeah. you, make sure you pack your bag full when of you Yoshiharu. Go to, when you go to King's Row, pack your bag of extras. <laughs> Don't forget. He's a fisherman, right? He can keep you guys, oh keep you fed for a while. Well, Te I mean, teach a Yoshiharu how to fish. Let's see if uh, Detonator can find that same sort of success. Saihate going to be up there. Difference being, uh, De La V going to have uh, going to be having his back up there. They do have Dodloff as well, but I mean Dodloff been dropping very early in a lot of these fights. Lazy Titan going to be. They are not actually doing it, are they? Oh my goodness. No, no, it's going to swap. No, 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 no. But Kalman's still. No, you cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> Cheeky, getting me excited there, thinking we're going to get that double sniper offensive comp coming out from AHQ. And see, this is the difference already. AHQ make their way in through the choke point, and Detonator not taking the fight to them at all, letting them walk in there and set up in these positions here. So Hate already up back in the back window, not even fighting off the Where's platform. His buddy? Where's and there his it friend? is. You can see it right now. 
It's going to be Dizzy already getting that high ground control for himself now. Now taking the fight to Saihate. Before the Bionic Field goes down, he finds that kill there. Now Dizzy uncontested now up on the high ground. Disastrous there for the side of Detonator. Kalman going to be picking himself up another kill as well. AHQ being the king of the mechs here as well. Don't need more uh, Yoshiharus when you can bring lazy titans to the fight. AHQ just wiping Detonator up here. Going to be able to cap this first point up extremely quickly and the second map leading the series 2-0. to zero. AHQ, what are you going to do, Detonator? So... So, I mean, you asked us if we were going to see King's Row as one-sided as we were yesterday. <laughs> I think the answer is yes. Uh, Detonator did not pick up a very good fight there. Their defense as well was just, it was challenged so easy. I mean, Dizzy just, he loved the high ground so much on his defense. He was like, you know what? I'm just going to go up there again. Why, oh. why, why would I, hey, oh, there's another soldier up here. Get out of here, Saihate. Look, I'm, I want to be up here. He takes him out, wins the 1v1, and then... Of course, his team wins the fight on the ground. Eric just going for 100% uh, play of the game uh, rate today here, picking up a second one here. I mean, yeah, that's pretty good play of the game. You get a lot of damage with that Reinhardt hammer. He's, 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 he's an aggressive Reinhardt, you know what I mean? Eric, he just loves to go, okay, I'm gonna drop, this, drop the shield, I'm just gonna go to town now on you. Yeah, don't care about the guys behind me, just gonna drop the shield. But on that point, on that point, right, both of these Reinhards have shown to be very aggressive as to the point of Diving very, very deep into the enemy team and quite often being punished for it. Now, oh, I, I'd say one's, okay, a little so, bit, so one's a bit more aggressive than the other one's one. One's a bit more aggressive than Yoshi's the other one. got these big, just god charges where he's just like praying, Oh, I'm gonna, I hope I hit somebody here. Sa samurai D? Yeah, oh, Samurai D, sorry. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. He's just like, I wanna get in there. This is how we start the fight. Not we just slowly push in, just okay, I'll charge. And yeah. then he just gets absolutely slammed. Which is, I mean, uh, one of the bigger problems on, on Li Jung Tower, where they're a little bit too hesitant. And he says, oh, you know what? Maybe maybe we'll just get a little bit more aggressive. And he just a charges in. A little bit? In. Yeah, he just charges in and it's just so way here's, aggressive. So here's the, the big problem for Detonator. There's two, so I'm going to go for attack first. I'm going to mainly talk about their attack here. Two factor. One, Well, not much defense never, to be seen. <laughs> Didn't see much. <laughs> defense kind of just disappeared a little bit. There was a like, defense? Were they defending? Did they defend? It looked um, like Dizzy was defending again. <laughs> <laughs> so, two, fa two, two ways they lost the attack. One, they lost the shield battle on the ground. You sort of spoke to that already. They played the McCree, didn't they play the McCree. Um, you were saying he didn't go for the flashbacks of the shield. I'm going to say, while that's correct, it is also easier said than done. You have yeah, to be yeah. able to, you have to, your team, not just the McCree, you're, to do that, you have to be, your Reinhardt's have to be face to face, like kissing, and then your McCree then can flashbang. But realistically, Amakin's not gonna run ahead of his Ryan and then try and do that. That's kind of suicide. Your team has to positionally be able to force the, um, force that ground right off HQ, get in their faces, then be able to make those kind of plays. And they weren't in a position at all to do that. They were constantly losing the shield fight. And on the ground, they were never able to successfully break in with any sort of shield advantage or any sort of health or DPS advantage, nothing. On the, on the other side, the second factor on the top ground, they never really successfully challenged Dizzy. Now, we, we just kind of said that as well. So what a lot of teams have been doing is they're choosing to commit to one or the other. And a lot of teams, if the soldier on the high ground, the soldier near the clock tower is the problem, they're sending all six members up there, completely flushing them out. Yeah, you can have a buddy, but you're gonna need all your buddies. You're gonna need all five buddies to stop that. So six players going up there, completely take the top ground, do exactly what Dizzy did as the attacker, put your own soldier on there instead. He's now entrenched up there and incredibly hard to challenge. Then you can take the fight on the ground and then you can win. Detonator, neither won the fight up the top or the bottom and they lost all the way through. I mean, that's also the biggest problem as well. I mean, it's not like Dizzy just ran up there with his entire team. He ran up there and challenged Saihate and just shot him. Just killed him one by yeah, one, right? Yeah, that's a they, bigger problem yeah. because they didn't even need to do that. They just sent one dude and he won. Yeah, and well, I mean, it that's is busy. It is dizzy. That's something that shouldn't happen, though, right? I mean, they should have uh, at least a diva able to react with Saihati saying, "Look, look, dizzy's running up here. I'm gonna need some defense matrix. Come up and help me, bro." Well, it wasn't even it wasn't even that as well. He was like, "Okay, I've got this, boys. Don't worry, I've got this. I've got biotic fit, and I'm dead. I've got biotic, and I'm dead." The other thing is, Saihati's positioning is he never. I never saw him really decide which window he wanted to peek out of to get the sustained damage. Yeah. He was always looking out one window, he was like, no, I don't like this, goes the other window, he was like, no, let's try something else, and then just keeps changing up, and never was he in a solid position to continually get that DPS out there, I think that really affected him in a negative way. By the time he finally got to the side, which by the way, I felt when he got to the actual, his left side, that angle wasn't good anyway, he couldn't really find good targets there. And then he found Dizzy immediately challenging him, out-damaged him, doesn't even get the biofield in time, so 
realistically, Saihaito's entire run up that top angle was a bit of a waste of time. I was going to say, like, you know, when, uh, we didn't really get to see much of uh, the defense, you know, for the side of uh, Detonator there. But for um, AHQ's defense, they almost break that, that section of the map down into sort of three points. You know, they hold that first platform, take the fight straight to Detonator at the front gate. If they get pushed back a little bit, Detonator do manage to make their way into the small room. They just fall back to the second platform. If they manage to get to the point, fight out of the window. And you can see that the, uh, the soldier play coming up from Dizzy is just a lot more polished. And maybe it comes down to the communications on the team as well. Smy mentioned it quite a few times, you know, when they want Yoshi to go and contest Dizzy up on the high ground, you can sort of see what they were going for, wanting to win that ground fight, not worry about Dizzy and just kill him once everyone else is dead on the floor. But he's too slow every time, what, or what too I've, early. What I've now noticed is something that's been consistently happening across at least two maps, small sample size, I know, but AHQ are consistently winning the ground shield to shield fights. So you're playing a shield composition, HQ are beating detonated shield composition every time. When I say shield composition, you're playing some sort of hit scan or uh, some kind of DPS that you need to protect behind a shield and you're getting the sustained damage, you're death balling in a sense. And HQ have done that better than detonator now across two separate maps. Detonator have, the only real success they found is they have hard countered AHQ's dive. Now what happens when AHQ don't run dive? Detonator running out of options on that. Yeah, yeah so I mean, a or AHQ, uh, you know, definitely working out how Detonator are playing. Um, Detonator having a nice showing there on Li Chang Tower, but AHQ do lead the series 2 to 0. We're going to take a quick break and we'll get into map 3 when we return. Hello and welcome back to the Overwatch Pacific Championship English broadcast. I'm Dallas Easy Fighter Joining me here on the couch, Kevin Ever Walker and Matt Smite Ross, and we're right in the middle of AHQ taking on Detonator Gold. AHQ leading the series 2 to 0. <laughs> Detonator started off strong, managing to pick themselves up two maps on uh, control, but moving into King's Row. They weren't so lucky. Oh, I wouldn't say lucky. No, they definitely weren't so lucky. They weren't lucky and they weren't. <laughs> they just didn't play that very well either, so. That's I mean, right. It was, <laughs> that it was, was the distinction I was making. It there. was also punished very heavily by AHQ. AHQ notice You create your own luck in this game. <laughs> exactly, right? I mean, AHQ. It's called skill. I'm, I'm, not gonna, <laughs> I'm not gonna sit there and, and say, like, oh, Detonator, Detonator played terribly. It's AHQ notice the mistakes that Detonator were making <laughs> and they punished them very heavily. They punished them very, yeah, no, very, very, true, very true. Right? And it didn't look at all like it did on, on Control Center at all. Maybe it looked, a, uh, sorry, Control Center, like that actual I map believe on they Lee did Jung as Tower. Well. Yeah, it, look, it looked like that. But on the rest of Lee Jung Tower, it was a little bit more back and forth. Uh, Detonator were actually fighting back. But King's Row, it was one strategy versus another strategy from both sides. And they used basically the same thing on attack and defense. And HQ just had the better one. Well, here's the thing. The key difference between the maps, obviously different game modes, but Lee Jung, between the different stages of themselves, didn't ever have a chance to fully reset the entire game and come out with something different to try and either surprise or challenge HQ. A couple of times, literally, it has worked. Now, King's Row, you don't get that opportunity. You, you got your one game, you don't have a chance to completely reset and be like, oh, here comes picks that you didn't think were gonna come and stuff like that. It, 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 it just was <laughs> what it was. And to speak to Lee Jung Tower a little bit more as well, HQ did punish extremely well in that. Um, again, where Gardens, I, Gardens, I believe, was where the biggest change-ups happened. That, that was what was really yeah. telling about the two teams. HQ coming the second time around Garden. I call that a punish because they adapted extremely well. Yeah, uh, they punished them. And because Detonator also walked in expecting to do the exact same thing again. And HQ said, well, no, we're, we're a better team than that. We're very much prepared for this. We're going to walk in and call your bluff that you're gonna do the same thing, and it worked out perfectly for them. Now, to speak to King's Row, what Detonator hovered over at the start of their attack could have been a very, very different match. They were thinking about doing Sombra again, and I feel like... Mm, I don't know if there's okay. enough health packs, but... <laughs> there's, there's enough to charge up the Sombra ult, and... We, we've we, seen other teams yeah, do it before. We, we, we've seen Detonator do it before. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, yesterday, in fact, and they actually got the... the no, I mean on King's Row. On, on, King's King's Row. Row. on King's Row, on attack, yeah. Detonator did it, and, oh, yeah, yeah. and they charged up EMP by the first fight, and no one else was near their ults, and it almost worked out perfectly, they just didn't execute challenging the soldier on the high ground well enough. Now, if they... And, and that's I, a key part yeah, as well. Yeah, exactly, and it was, it was literally just a, a, a one second difference, if, if, the, if Yoshihara was up there just a little bit sooner, it would have actually been a one fight for them, because um, the strategy's the same. I want to speak to the Sombra composition a little bit as well, because... Now, 
EMP works extremely well against a shield-based composition. How do you get past the shield? You EMP the whole thing, whoopsie daisy, no more shields in play. Here's the prob here's one problem is to also do that, they need to be able to challenge the high ground and get the soldier off because you play the EMP, you miss the soldier because he's, he's completely in a different section of the map on the defense and you have to be able to sufficiently hit enough members because what is the point of breaking the shield composition is you break past the shields to then get to the squishy DPSs. If you fail to do that, even with the Sombra composition, call you EMP all the shields, whoops, you still didn't get dizzy, you still didn't get the soldier, you failed that execution of that attack. I mean, we've seen that as well, when the soldier's sitting up there, you know, the EMP can still hit him sometimes if um, Sombra gets enough, I think, elevation on her, but it doesn't matter, you can still just left click yeah, if you don't actually push her, if you, if you He can still leave and hide behind a wall, so you still need to yeah. be able to, like, the whole goal of getting past the shield, again, is you have to get the DPS, and if you fail to get that, then you fail the execution of the entire plan to start with, so, very important to understand Execution-wise, what is your actual win condition and how to achieve that? And most importantly, where did Neta fail the most was actually pushing Dizzy off and actually sufficiently uh, challenging Dizzy. Well, hopefully Detonator can work out their win condition now, taking things back home with the home pick. They have chosen Hanamura, so going to be very interesting to see how this one plays out. We've already seen AHQ being very, very dominant on defense on this. You know, Crappy's sort of Torbjorn play is far from Crappy, it seems. Well, indeed. I mean... And this is something that Detonator are going to have to recognize. I mean, in a similar way to how AHQ found out what the composition was going to be on Gardens and countered that, Detonator need to move into this saying, okay, look, Crappy is almost definitely going to be on that Torbjorn. They do it almost every single assault map, or at least occasionally on hybrid maps as well. So they need to recognize this. How are they going to deal with it? Some teams like to use Farah. Other teams like to use very, very heavy dive and just go right past the turret or right on top of it, kill it straight away. And another thing about a Torbjorn composition, I say this all the time, is that taking them out in the first fight is very important because that's when Torbjorn hasn't thrown his armor on absolutely everyone, hasn't thrown his armor on the healers, on the squishies. No Molten Core. Exactly. Uh, molten Core is, is pretty important too. Yeah, because you to, to, to get past the Torbjorn composition, you got to get past the turret. And as soon as the Molten Core comes down, suddenly you can't really get past the turret. So that's, you know, that is that really changes things up. It's actually, for that kind of composition, I would say one of, if not the most high value ultimates for that defensive composition. Yeah, I mean, it also makes him, you know, pseudo healer, pseudo tank, pseudo DPS, you know, he becomes a, the jack of all trades, if you will, you know, and it's so hard to so, sort of take him down with that much armor, you know, he's throwing out more armor at the same time. And I mean, a lot of these players have shown how good they are actually just purely aiming, you know, with the rivet gun. And that in itself obviously just does an insane DPS when the core is going down. But it's going to be Detonator defending first. See, they're not going to be running a Torbjorn composition at all. Still going for some shield-based composition, but they're also throwing things in like Genji. They're running three tanks, they've got that rogue hole, so a little bit of anti-dive, but AHQ, they're not running any dive of their own. In fact, they've slotted that Hunter Overalls with a soldier right now. Shield-based comp once more, and again, they are going to win that shield battle. Soldier just does way more damage than Amakin on that Genji. Yes, but I do like Amakin being on the Genji. Hopefully you can find some openings here. Hook coming out, doesn't manage to connect with anything just yet. HQ do have control of the high ground, but there is a sneaky Amakin on the roof. I'm unsure if they're aware of that but just is, yet. Is this a good position for the defenders to be in? AHQ just walked right through the, one of the hardest choke points to get through. Detonator has oh, let them go through. Amakin pounces right on top of Dizzy. That will be the opening that Detonator were looking for. They do lose Saihate themselves, so if they can pick up the next kill here, and it's going to be Amakin jumping straight up onto the support, but he's losing all his teammates right now. AHQ just brawling all over the point. So once Amakin does manage to finish up the support, will there be any of his teammates left? It looks like Nout at the moment, as now AHQ getting themselves a lot of cap time, are going to get the first point extremely easily here. And despite a few ultimates actually being used by Detonator, something like an Earth Shatter, still didn't get any value out of it, didn't have enough numbers at the end. Now AHQ, as long as they don't swap up their team composition here, they can run in with an ultimate advantage. Dizzy didn't actually get a lot of ult chance during that fight, he died quite early on, so they don't have a great target for their Nano Boost. So the next best option, very likely going to be the Roadhog. Throw Nano Boost on him and just whole hog yourself right through this point here. Oh. Get that Defense Matrix on cooldown because that's going to be the biggest counter. Or just Kills the Genji and go with the numbers advance. There it is, AHQ just flexing up on the high ground, pushing Detonator off that one. Here comes the Nano Boost on top of the whole hog now, just cleaning up the rest of these Detonator players. And such a passive defense from Detonator. Are they even playing defense right now? 
Boom! There goes Doddle off as well. And I mean, this is extremely fast cap time here on point number two. 50% for AHQ so far. Still dropping these detonator players as they trickle into the point. And is there any answer from the detonator side? Can they thwart this attack? It looks like no. Indeed, Tactical Visor coming in to clean up these players here. Earthshatter to finish him off. And that'll be all she wrote there. Five minutes, 55 left on the clock for AHQ. So very fast. And now... Going to be Detonator's chance to see if they can get past point number one. So let's cast our mind back to every single defense we've seen on Hanamura where point two was defended. That balcony was just hardly ever contested. No team, very few teams actually give that up, right? They always hold their ground up there. They've got Diva, they've got Reinhardt to hold it up there. And this difference here, Detonator immediately were either thrown off the edge or the other teammates just walked off, just jumped back down to the point. And then that immediately gave Dizzy such a huge advantage. No one was contesting it. Well, AHQ's positioning as well. The teammates really sort of, I feel, helped them get into those spots there. You know, they knew exactly where they wanted to get that balcony first. Didn't even matter, obviously, that Amakin was sitting up there. Waited far too long. Let all of these tanks, you know, get in position there. Same thing on point number two as well. Just walked straight up to the high ground, turfed off the tanks, pushed them off there with a Diva, no stress, and then same thing again, Dizzy uncontested, just getting to go to work. And there it is, Crappy on the Torbjorn, it's love it. Boy. Love it's, it. It's your boy MC Crappy <laughs> on <laughs> that Torbjorn. Now, the big thing about this is that it does mean AHQ are running single healer, but you talked about how Torbjorn, he can sometimes almost feel like a healer himself with how much armor he can throw out. You can stack it up if you get your entire team already stacked up with that armor. You can actually use it during combat to throw 75 health onto people in the middle of combat. And this is armor as well. It's going to help you stay alive even harder. Now. Detonator, they're running again a similar composition to what AHQ are using, but the big difference is Amakin, he's going to be on McCree. AHQ, they're also running the Reinhardt. They're going to win the shield battle because not only do they have Soldier, who does more damage than McCree to shields, but also Torbjorn. That's, that's an extra DPS that they're going to have. Also, Roadhog blows apart shields too. Detonator are going to have one of their own, so don't expect these shields to last long for either side. But, I mean, Vorbion's going to be the deciding factor. It's, it's going to be harder for them to kill the turret, right? Because, you know, um, McCree not doing as much DPS as Soldier, per se. He can't headshot a turret. So, who's actually going to kill the turret on the side of Detonator? Well, the thing is, they have so much shields that it, it can actually be a little less of a factor. It's not like Dive, where you've got Tracer and Genji, who are just being auto-targeted by the turret, right? Reinhardt will shield them. There's also 600 health points to go through on Roadhog as well. These turrets are a little bit less of a factor when they're actually shooting. Yes, you can still walk up to them and get killed by them when it's close range, but at the same time, it's not anything like dive. They can actually ignore the turret for most But of then the they're time. giving, I feel, so much ultimate charge to That's old MC Crappy, and then we're just gonna hear Molten Court. <laughs> hear horrible, horrible, <laughs> horrible. Don't ever say that again. But um, that was obviously talking to myself there. No, it's all right. I liked it. I liked it indeed. <laughs> but here's another big difference. AHQ are not letting Detonator through the big doors here, through the choke point. The, as soon as they do, they challenge them in this choke point here. But Detonator, they picked up a kill. They've killed the turret. Oh, they have found the kill on the turret there. Amakin making that change up uh, to the Genji there. So Hati over to the uh, to the Tracer. So that's working out for them. Nano Boost as well coming through uh, onto Samurai D. Good sleep dart there just to lock that one down. Amakin finding some nice reflect damage there as well. So Detonator actually all over this one before Krabby can even get that Molten Core up. Looking to make him pay for this one. Oh my goodness! Oh, Crappy no! somehow finds that kill there with all odds against him. Cap time still going in the way of Detonator though, but AHQ are managing to get themselves back on and get a small little bit of a contest. Slightly longer than uh, AHQ's uh, uh, offense there, but they will get the cap here, yes. Detonator. So, so Amigan dying to, to Crappy there, just a little bit of a morale hit rather than anything impactful. Now the big difference is, Detonator, I feel like they could have actually attacked that a lot sooner than they did if they just came out the right composition. They should have called out the Torbjorn. Oh no! What a charge now. He's all the way in there and that's going to be disastrous, I feel. He should be able to get the kill onto him, but not at all. Going to be uh, AHQ coming up with the good kills here as well. Samurai D managing to charge out with his life intact and AHQ somehow managing to stabilize off this. Detonator not making that uh, snowball momentum work in their favor cool. just there. Also, that fight went for so long, and HQ were actually fighting back quite a lot, picking up kills here and there, that they're close to six ults of their own, in fact. So, Detonator also swapping things up, throwing Saihate onto that soldier as well. So, again, they're now the team that are behind in ultimates, despite winning the point there, winning that fight to capture point A. Now they 
are still going to be behind. They're not going to get this point with as much time as AH2 did on their attack. But watch how AH2 will actually hold their grounds up there. They won't give up the balcony, won't give that humongous position advantage over the detonator. And while that happens, Dizzy just gets free time up in the rat spot here, just gets to go to town on the side of detonator. Nice, nice pressure indeed. That's exactly what you want to see. Jumping straight onto Dizzy there, uh, but do not manage to find the kill. But look at all the ultimates here in the bank there for AH2 as well. Don't even really have to commit much to that one. I believe they just used the whole hog up in the uh, closed room there. But other than that, good way to hold that one down. But didn't they getting close to a full full set themselves? Yeah, I mean, they did swap the soldiers, so they are okay with uh, baiting out one ultimate and then losing the fight. We saw a big answer coming up onto Saihate as well. In fact, he almost died. So they are aware that Saihate will be up on that high ground. They should challenge him. They just need to send Yoshiharu. That's all they need to do. Uh, sorry, not Saihate, the other one, Dizzy, up on the high ground. But all they've got to do is send Yoshiharu up there and deal with him. But that's a self-destruct. And Lazy Titan, as per usual, finding himself a couple of kills with that one there. And AHQ easily dealing with this um, attack, just dropping the two ultimates there, cleaning this one up for themselves. And now look at the even getting aggressive, pushing out of uh, the point two as well, getting all the way up into the grills of Detonator. Two ultimates though, what did they get out of Detonator? The self-destruct? No, that wasn't even used, that was actually just either out of a mix. So Detonator, closer to their six-man ult. Now what have AHQ got to go with? They're not gonna have self-destruct. Big things they're not gonna have is Earth Shatter, but Crappy, he's got that Molten Core as well. That's gonna put a huge amount of damage out. That's gonna put it a lot on Samurai D to have a shield up, block a lot of that turret damage, or someone needs to kill the turret instead, because Yoshiharu can't be blocking it, he needs to be dealing with Dizzy. Oh, and there it is. Much better than my, uh, than, than the way I said it just then. Detonator now finding themselves an early kill onto Crappy there. Molten Core getting not much out of it. Now Detonator making everything fall in their way. Whole Hog coming through here. Nice reflect from Amakin to finish this one off. And now the Dragon Blade. Here we go. Do they have enough ultimates to keep themselves on the point? Nice sleep dart there though. Stopping that ultimate in its tracks. And now AHQ looking to answer back. Nano Visor coming out from them. And let's see if they can find these kills. Career's going to be starting this one off. But nice shielding coming in from Samurai D. They do have great positioning there around the corner. And now AHQ get themselves onto the point we'll be able to take this fight to detonator and that'll be Saihate though answering back with a tactical visor of his own picking up one for the side of detonator even trades coming out of the like HQ dizzy getting a lot of pressure now put on some on the high oh! ground good stuff there from Yoshiharu to take him out that might be what detonator were looking for but HQ no they do manage to stabilize off that it doesn't actually matter the oh, big thing here is the difference between HQ's attack that won them the game was the fact that Saihate was on a low ground. He was forced off of it by Lazy Titan. He was doing his job, keeping the soldier busy. Another thing that got Detonator so far during that fight was a humongous Earth Shatter by Samurai D. He got so many members in it and also a Molten Cord turret as well. Fun fact, Earth Shatter does stun the Torbjorn turret. Well, here we go. They uh, do keep the uh, Torbjorn going, actually, after that Molten Core. Almost going to have another one in the bank there as well. Detonator trying to get up the high ground. Nice self-destruct there. Doesn't find any kills, but buys them a little bit of time. Now Detonator going to be able to recommit to this fight, working their way up on the uh, balcony now, seeing which way they're going to go out. Is he still not in the uh, total rat spot just yet? Nice hook onto, into Sleep Dart, though, so managing to save uh, Detonator players' lives there. But De La V going to be out of this fight very early, so Detonator again, forced back. Going to have to rethink about this one ever so slightly. Well, Wait for De La V to get back. De La V, he's Lucio, so he can roll a blade over pretty quickly, so they're not going to lose a huge amount of time, but that... Oh no! He <laughs> dies again on the way back! Okay, Dizzy. I lied, they do lose a lot of time. <laughs> They also lose a lot of ult charge to that. That's uh, two Lucio's worth, that's 400 hit points of ult charge over to AHQ. And Detonator, they're still positioning in a point where Dizzy can still shoot them. Yeah, Dizzy just fishing for another tactical visor. It's gonna be up for him as well. And has that armor as well. You can see the entire side of AHQ fully stacked up now, looking extremely uh, buff indeed. Gonna be hard for Detonator to push through this one. Only three ultimates to work with. Here there it is. Earth Shatter, but what did it connect with? Not all that much. They find Crappy and a turret with that self-destruct. But I mean, that's all the ultimates that Detonator have. Now they need to get themselves onto the point and walk into the three, may or make that four that AHQ have to work with. Saihate though, hitting the tactical visor. This has to come up big, but the nano booster Dizzy isn't worried about that one. Look how frisky he is in this one. All up in the front lines. You're not a tank, mate, and you're gonna pay with your life for that. And a big difference there was that 
Uh, Dizzy, he wasn't shooting into a defense matrix. He had his Diva there with him, Lazy Titan blocking the other tactical visor coming out from Saihate, who got no value from his own ultimate. So once again, a good Earth Shatter to start things off, but there was a lot of ults committed to just kill Torbjorn and his turret. And oh my god, Crappy, where are you putting a turret? That this is a sick turret position there. So I feel obviously if Detonator do, if they actually let them get in through the um through the high ground there and they jump straight on the point, they're not going to be fully aware of where the turret is and it's just going to get a lot of damage being shot into the backside of Detonator he's, Gold. He's just sick of it getting earth shattered and, and self-destructed every single time. Now they have given up the balcony up here, but they've committed ults to do it. Do they have enough to go back onto it as well? I mean, they've taken this ground here. That's great for Saihate when he eventually starts shooting down. They actually got a one third tick there just by having uh, Yoshiharu on the point itself. That's quite good. And now they are finally getting themselves down onto the point. They will be able to sit uh, Saihate up on the high ground there as well. Karez though, going moderately uncontested up in the back, getting to heal everybody here. Eric going to be nano boosted, is not swinging his hammer just yet. Finally now getting up into Samurai's D's face, finding that kill there. And now AHQ coming out on top of this exchange. Crappy's turret going to work as well. Earth Shatter as well, just to finish this one off. And that's going to be all she wrote. AHQ holding Hanamura down on point number two, taking the series three and zero. And while things looked like they could have been closer after that Lee Jung Tower match went to three and two, the next two maps did not look good at all for Detonator, unfortunately. I mean, that first point attack was, was nice. They managed to actually get up to the second point, but nothing looked great after that. A few good earth shatters, but nothing capitalized on. But there's your boy, it's crappy. How, uh, wh when did he get it though? What did, what did he do? Classic Torbjorn what did he do? play of the game where you just die, and your turret kills everything. What did he do? It's a turret yeah, kill. Yeah, just killing it. Oh, huge. <laughs> huge player. <laughs> I, was actually, cool. I was actually gonna say before you got into the cast that if Crappy's not playing with the rivet gun, he's playing with the ribbit gun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one, because, yeah. Does he use a Lucio? Yes, he's does a Lucio he use, okay. But does he use the skin, though? I don't think he does, because, oh, the problem, because the you can't, yeah. because it's, you, the tournament's over, yeah. Yeah, you gotta use the stock standard. Well, you gotta unlock it first. Now, you don't, you don't, you, when you get the skin, you can get it, but you gotta be pretty lucky. Either way, <laughs> so for Detonator, I think, first of all, for HQ, that, that attack time is really insane. What do they have, like 5 minutes 55? Yeah, 5 55. Now, just walk that's straight almost through. almost as quick as what Blank got yesterday with like 6 minutes and 5, or 6 minutes and something. And... Realistically, like it was 10 seconds difference, maybe 15 seconds difference. The same. Both of those attack times are absolutely insane. And I said in the cast yesterday with Pixie, being able to really push on through in, in one massive push and cap through both points currently is kind of still rather unprecedented, especially at this level. It just it realistically shouldn't be able to happen, but AHQ snowballed so hard. They got the positioning so well. Dizzy immediately setting himself up on the high ground. Um, tactical visor coming out into play. It just looked like Detonator kind of got rolled over, not only just on cap one, but cap two as well. Detonator's big mistake on cap one was running three tanks, they didn't hold the doors. That was really surprising to me. I don't know why if you run three tanks, you don't hold the doors. Um, that's what that entire composition is built up around. Now, they also ran Genji on Amakin, and that's okay. I'm not, I'm not opposed to that, but again, they're running like different sort of win conditions, different sort of objectives based on composition that don't really match up well. And the Genji's great for all the fighting in the wide open spaces, which would make sense why they, they gave the doors, they just left the doors wide open. However, don't run the three tanks then because then you should have been holding the doors, in which case the Genji is far less effective because you want to be out fighting in the open spaces. So it just compositionally, they conflict. What didn't end up trying to do compositionally, I feel, really conflicts and that's been a bit of their problem. It also comes into play as well because um, it's the shield battle again, right? One team has a soldier, the other team has a Genji. Yeah, that's, you're not going to win a shield exactly, battle. Exactly, right? So just if, you're, if you're not going to win the shield battle, you need to be diving the enemy team. But how are you going to be doing that with three tanks? It's quite hard. And not, so, and not diving, they didn't have a Winston, they didn't have exactly. any real divers. And even if you are running triple tank, triple tank dive doesn't have the damage up, but you need the extra tracer, you need the extra DPS. I mean, this is what I'm talking about. Detonator run, running compositions that conflict with the goals of what the composition is, composition is trying to do. It's trying to do half the one thing, half the other thing, but neither thing properly. And the other interesting thing is for HQ, I, I kind of enjoyed them playing um, 
Tobin on the second cap as well. That doesn't, that's not yeah. something you typically see anymore because when you get to the second cap, you do switch off the Tobin or for Crappy. I can't understand. He says, he I, have has molten core, yeah. I have molten core. Let's give it a shot. It worked out a lot better than they expected, so they never got off it. Yeah. And, and a big mistake from, from, from Detonator was they committed a ton of ults just to get past the Torbjorn. So not only was it super effective, but I mean, Detonator had no answer to it. The other thing is as well, I mean, it did work once. Uh, they got entrenched on the point. Now, uh, AHQ did come back and defend that, that push, but that was all off the back of a big Earth Shadow catching not just the turret, but also three or four members of AHQ because they were defending on that part of the balcony. After that, it's, it's like way back on the Gardens map where they adapted. They recognize, look, this is what Detonator are going to do again. They've got Earth Shatter up, so let's stand in a different part. Let's leave Crappy there with his turret up. You know, we'll just leave him for dead. You know, uh, they were going to commit a whole lot of bots, and they did. They threw an Earth Shatter, they threw Self Destruct, and suddenly you've got to move on to the point. And still with AHQ, who are on the high ground on both sides of the point as well. So, how are we going to deal with that without any ults left, right? You're going to jump down onto the point, no Earth Shadow, no Self Destruct. I mean, Crappy's going to respawn. By the time you're on the point, he's coming back in like eight seconds. So, what yeah, are you getting and out you of need that? A lot, you need a lot of momentum and a lot of value based off ultimates attacking the second cap. You need to be able to get multiple kills with ultimates, deny multiple ultimates out of the enemy defenders to really alleviate that defender's advantage. Otherwise, you spend like two ultimates just to get a turret at a Torbjorn. How are you dealing with the rest of the members? And they didn't. It worked out kind of well when they went for that. Um, they, they managed to get themselves on the point, but I think they hit the nano blade like way too soon. I think they did it just to finish off maybe Lazy yeah, Titan yeah. and the Diva. And then as he sorry, he, um, he as he tried Zamek and tried to push around the corner, um, he gets sleep darted like instantly. I think if they waited for yeah, that and waited for that. waited for the um, attack visor nano boost to come out and then countered that with the dragon blade, that's how they actually would have got themselves the second point cap. I think after that they were quite demoralized in a sense because none of their fights looked like they knew what they were doing after that. There was one where they got the control of the high ground and the rest of AHQ were sitting on, you know, that first sort of high ground that where the turret was going up most of the time. And they get up there and they think, oh no, we have to go back around and fight them over there. And they go back down the stairs and come back around rather than just being like, okay, everyone jump on the point. Yoshi just go up there and knock the Reinhardt off. Like So it does almost feel like didn't it a consistently playing catch up. Yeah. Yeah. Throughout the entire process always playing catch up, always one step behind what AHQ are doing and they're always figuring out like, oh, they're doing this now, we're just getting there, we're nearly there, and then AHQ just get one leg up again and they're consistently trying to get The, the difference up. as well is that sometimes Detonator will come out with something really good, like uh, like that Gardens composition or on Hanamura getting these good Earth Shatters saying like, look, they're all grouping around the turret, we can stun the turret while it's in Molten Core and it's a non-factor and kill it in the, you know, the collateral damage of the fight. So they get good ideas like that, and it does throw the other team off guard. But then, if it doesn't work out and flat out win them the game, AHQ will just sit back and say, well, look, you know what? We're not gonna do that again, we're gonna learn. Detonator doesn't do that. Detonator just caught off guard by normal strategies and still don't adapt to it. The other thing as well is I feel like when they put that pressure on Dizzy, we sort of saw it on, on point one hold there. You know, their whole plan was to maybe like have Amakin drop straight onto Dizzy. I think that worked out quite well for them, you know, to, to destroy him. But the rest of the players on the side of um, AHQ are just so polished, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, you can kill Dizzy, that's all right. We'll just kill the rest of your squishies on the point there because you've got no DPS to deal with any of our tanks. So, I mean, that's just one thing which they can't really work out. You know, we saw that on King's Row. They're like, let's go for good the ground. Let's kill all the tanks, leave Dizzy with it. Let's not worry about them. They come into Hanamura, they're like, okay, kill Dizzy and then we'll be fine. They kill Dizzy, they're still not fine. So, I mean, they've got a lot of work to do, I feel, as a team as a whole. You've got to find a balance. You can't can't just commit completely into one of these sides of things and it also comes to the play where you're talking about compositions where they're trying to do two things at once so and achieve neither exactly right so again it's a bit of the opposite problem where they're just trying to commit all onto one thing and not getting the other thing like not winning the fight on the ground or not actually dealing with dizzy i mean that happened like you said in two different ways on king's row and then on hanamura so again uh, i feel like they need to find that balance where they are winning both of these engagements where they are dealing with the, the soldier on the high ground, which is consistently happening. I mean, AHQ did this every single game. They always had a soldier, so it's not like a new thing. Detonator had plenty of time to work this out. And to their credit, yeah, they were sending Yoshihara up there to deal with him quite a lot, but at that point, Dizzy was just ready for him every single time. You need to add that one little extra thing, maybe throw up one biotic grenade. I don't know what you need to do, but Yoshihara is not able to do, do it just on his own. So. I mean, the thing is, is it feels like Detonator have to tell Yoshi what to do. This is, this is the difference, mm. is that Lazy Titan 
is instantaneous. Like he's doing it before I think, oh, maybe they should send the diva. The diva's already there. Yeah. Like Lazy Titan's knocking people off when he needs to knock people off. He's eating things at the right times. I mean, I, I swear if we, if we could actually have stats in this game, we should probably go back and review all the VODs actually. How many times, because it's not all about getting kills, you know, he manages to, I guess, buy them a lot of time with his self-destructs. But I swear this guy has like one of the highest sort of self-destruct kill rates like out of all I would all agree. The divas, yeah. Observationally, yeah. now statistically got no idea, but observationally, I would have to agree a lot of divas miss kills completely, whatever it is. Um, he but, must be practicing these but, the placements. Um, well, it's, it's also a team thing. It, it's placement, but it's also his team being in a position where you are forced the enemy to, to either eat the diva bomb or did you get killed in some other way? So it's almost like they get into a win-win position where the Diva Bomb is just going to have a higher rate of success anyway. And I have to credit that to the team as well as to Lazy Titan. I think Lazy Titan's also the player who calculates calculates his self-destruct positioning so well. Uh, that one on King's Row where he just landed Simple on, geometry. The, on, on the corner of that tunnel entrance which had three people hiding in it. And then in the interview afterwards, the host asked him like, did you calculate that? And he's like, oh yeah, yeah, I practiced that one. But I mean, we can't, no, hear, no, if, no, we no. can't hear if he was being sarcastic. Was he being sarcastic? <sighs> like mildly? My, well, it's, it's, I think he'd like, to, he'd, like to, he'd like to take credit for it, but I think he does also realize he got a little bit lucky. Like it, it was a pretty fortunate thing as well. It's pretty hard to practice that shot that precisely. Let's, yeah. let's get real. Well, let us know in the chat if you think that, uh, if you remember Lazy Titan's uh, extremely immense, uh, perfectly placed triple kill with his uh, self-destructor, was all skill or all luck? Uh, but anyway, Sun Sister are going to be coming up next uh, playing AHQ. We'll see if uh, they have what it takes to uh, take down the big dogs, it seems. We're going to go to a quick break, and then when we come back, we'll have the, all the action for you.